People don't even know that that Rockefeller was with our cipher. They was with us. They, people don't even know Rockefeller was with Priority Records. Reasonable doubt. People think Rockefeller was, huh? Reasonable doubt. That's the first album, yeah. Yeah, they didn't, they, but they don't look at the label part. They just think reason, reason without Rockefeller Records, Jay took crack money and started his own label. Ah, like, that's not what happened. Jay uh, became very successful with Priority Records, and Jay was smart. When Leo stepped to him and said, what do you want to do? You want to come over here? And he came over there. And that, did, and that, was, a, that, that it was a great move for Jay. It was a terrible move for, for, for Rockefeller. What do you mean by that? I mean, well, I mean, where is Rockefeller? What happened to Rockefeller? Where are all the artists from Rockefeller? Why the artists from Rockefeller don't have extendeds from their Rockefeller? Where, where's all the where, 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 Who's doing anything besides Jay Z? Right. Because through time, you start diluting and selling off stuff, and you sell off your baby, and you don't even really notice that. I'll get another label. I'll call it fucking let's get money. Who cares? But I just got four million. I don't do that. I will never sell my baby. So no disrespect to Jay. I'm just saying Jay was smart to know it was a better move for him personally to go with Leo than than he than he than than to try to maintain Rockefeller records as it was because of the situation that they had. And Dame ain't a stupid dude. He's not even a stupid dude, and he's not an asshole. Dame is just demanding. Now, he could be a little erratical here and there. He could be a little selfish to whatever. I guess we all have our own opinions of seeing that, but I don't, I don't really see that. I'm a, I'm a businessman, so I know. I see a man that has fight, that's fighting for what he believes in and fighting for never giving up and paying the price for it. The same way I do and the same way I did. I paid the price for not giving in. You you don't what you what you think? I didn't want to sell a million copies. You don't think I wanted to be uh, 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 known around the world, like really, really known? Yeah, of course I did, but I paid the price for it. I gave it was like either you were trading your integrity and your motherfucking manhood, meaning pull your drawers down, or you're gonna maintain your manhood and your integrity, sell the four hundred thousand you gonna sell. Be happy with whatever the fuck you got and get the fuck out of here. Well, I chose the second. For real. I do not. I'm a man. I go in women. I do not like having no men go in me. So I don't fuck with the music industry like that. You can't rub my leg. You can't rub my shoulder. You can't invite me to the house. You know, you can't do all those things that people have gotten done to them. And I personally know. So they can't tell me a motherfucking thing because I personally know. Okay, so you can't, but you can't do those things to Buckshot. And some people were willing to go all out, even do that, and be like, well, fuck it. I mean, he touched me once. I mean, it's not like I'm a faggot. And, and, which, again, nothing is, hey, look, I got more respect for the gays because they come out and say I'm gay than the, the, than the dudes that get done that way. Then they're crying. Knowing that when it's finished, they'll get a check, but they fucked up in the head. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I don't see how they do it. I don't. I really do not see how they do it. And I and that would never happen to me. And Duck Down Records has put out Smith and Wesson, Helter Skelter, OG, um, more artists, the boot camp, and even down to today, Duck Down put out Young and May, and blah blah blah. And, you know, people look at my career, they look at stuff and they consider that success. I don't, I don't, that ain't success to me. That's cool. That's getting there, but that ain't success. Success is what the fuck y'all got coming. Because you may look at that and be like, well, you should have did that in your best years. I couldn't do that. I was 20. I was 18, 19. You know what I'm saying? You can't even be a senator unless you're 30 years old. Right. So... You know what I mean? Like, come on. So did you, you with, with the with the Blake family, did you see this just in action or was this an active thing where they were teaching you these lessons along the way or was it more you just saw by example? 
I think I just saw by example. Yeah, I just saw by example. And being a Blake, you know, I'm so proud of that and so strong with that because if you was to meet each one of my family members, you would go, wow, I thought I was talking to Buckshot. Like, you would really feel that way in the sense of them being that sharp, demanding, intelligent, meaning they don't want to sit around and watch TV all fucking day. I don't watch TV. They don't sit around and come home from work and click the remote. No, they don't do that shit. They are very productive people. And I'm j- I am just happen to be a Blake. And I'm happy to, and I just happen to be very productive. The show proved that my grandmother, Cora Blake, was a very productive woman. And we just didn't happen to, you know, inherit a lot of her genes. To be honest with you, I just told you she had her own nightclub. Like, some people would rather get a, a job there. So, it, you know, and so when we did Enter the Stage, it was beautiful. It was beautiful because we had our family, but it was terrible because we didn't get nothing for it. We got nothing for Enter the Stage. We got robbed for Enter the Stage. We got nothing. I didn't start receiving money until I went to Duck. Until I, me, me and Drew started working with Duck Down, I didn't get a. I didn't even get a fucking lollipop from Enter the Stage. I, I've never saw money from Enter the Stage. Wow, that's crazy. I've never seen a ten dollar bill. Wow. So when you want to talk about getting done wrong. Why did he do me wrong like that? Why? He could have said, hey, this is what you get. This is what I get. This is what we're going to do. We're gonna do. I believe in me a little bit more. I'm taking a chance. So I'm going to take 60. You take 40. But why? Why? Why just ruin some kids' lives like that? And are you talking about Chuck Chubb or the Nervous Rex? I'm talking about Nervous Rex. Okay. I mean, me and Michael Weiss, we cool now. Because I, I, you know, I'm past that level. We cool. Everything is cool now, but you can't change history. You know, you cannot change the fact that Michael Weiss, you just never, ever said, here, Buckshot, here, Father, to you guys split this down, duck down, whoever, I don't give a fuck. But this is from Enter the Stage. This is a check from Enter the Stage. One of the royalties came in, blah, 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 took my half. You take your half. That's never, ever. In fact, Nervous Records, like most record companies, told me that I owe them money. I just told you Waka Flocka said that. Right. How the fuck I owe you money? You owe me money because the points you have on this record ain't enough to amount to the advance that I gave you, and those points are prorated. So I mean that prorated means that everything goes against those points. Everything, a dollar, a dime, a lollipop, anything you took, a phone call you made, Anything goes against the money you would have gotten from those two points. Yeah, it's wild. You understand? So it was a good time as making it into the stage, and it was the worst time of my life with the creation of Duck Down. My father was dying. He died that 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 time. I had to hold my mother down. I had to hold my family down. It wasn't easy. And at the same time, I had to create a record company, something that was not just going to be a corner store record label, something that was going to be big enough to really impact the world. And we did do it. At the same time, our pops was dying. At the same time, come on. At the same time, I had to hold up my moms and my family because they all going crazy because my father was the glue. So... You know what I'm saying? When motherfuckers talk about strength, like, I I don't even go there, bro. I don't even go there. You know what I'm saying? The next year I do an album with Pop, the very next 95, I do an album with Pop 96, he died. Like, come on. My partner dies bad, like, come on, man. Sean Price, like, motherfuckers wanna talk about strength. Try the shit that I've been through. Right. You know what I'm saying? You do a record with Aaliyah the next week, then and she died. Try to try to get through the shit that I've been through. That's try it. to live in, in, in a world where where 
if you're not a record, if you're not signed to a label right now, you really like you never. It's only two labels. Then you're not gonna get no money. Half the they, they, these little niggas came out and told the truth that it ain't no. They all clout chasing. Clout just means a pat on your back. I'm doing all this shit, rubbing balls, shitting on the floor, rapping while I'm pissing. I'm doing all that because there's a term called clout chasing, which is really just a pat on your back saying, here's a pat, I, you got a like. Or better yet, a thumbs up. Thumbs up! It's a like. That's what a like looks like. Look, everybody, thumbs up. You're a great guy. You're pissing yourself. And I'm going to give you a thumbs up. Well, it counts as a like. I press like. I mean, it's a thumbs up. And hopefully, if you get a trillion thumbs up, Someone will want to give you some money to piss in a cup for them. I mean, you piss in the street. Like, come on. Let's be honest. Someone's going to offer you a deal because you stuck your tongue out so hard, you almost popped it. And you became the motherfucking internet sensation for a week. Somebody going to give you a tongue deal? Come on, man. So what? where do you think... Uh our respect for ourselves as people was lost. When did you see that happening? Or what happened? How did when, we be, when, when, we, when we traded in our integrity for clout, for money. And when did you when see that? Trade, when did that, when were some of the key things you saw of that happening? Maybe during, nah, maybe during nine, Seven, nine, seven, maybe nine, eight, maybe nine, seven, nine, eight. When we lost our champions, when we lost the integrity of Biggie Smalls, when we lost the integrity of Tupac, people saying, "No, you can't be this nigga. Come out and be real nigga, and still be a rich nigga, and still be paid, and be that." We lost that integrity around those years, and you know. You know, I'm, I'm not going to mention, I'm not going to say it was a Paul Wall or this one or a young, I mean, a Slim Thug, whoever, I don't know, whatever. And like, I'm not going into names, but I know the era of when we started saying money is more important than anything. Even the nigga touching your butt. Even somebody sticking a dick in your ear. All right? And if you, once again, if you are, you know, if you think I'm homophobic, I'm not. It's just like, it's just like, I don't know, asking a homo to, 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 to suck a bitch pussy. Like, you know, they don't do that. They're homos. The fuck you talking about? But if, you, if, I, if I start paying homos a million dollars just to do that, they'll start doing that. Then it become a standard to be like, well, hey, it's not a problem. It's, all, it's over money. I mean, who wouldn't do that for money? Like, I wouldn't, motherfucker. That's why I made more money. Right. You know what I'm saying? You gonna pay me less money to lessen my integrity? Come on. That's why if we would have took that dollar deal from Def Jam, Def Jam is a dust market. That shit is over. Def Jam is a pile of shit. That shit is a fucking ghost town. Nobody from the real Def Jam is there. Not Mike Kaiser. Not Julie, not Lior, not Russell, nobody, not Mike, not nobody is over there. Okay? So eventually, if you look at all the artists that were on Def Jam that got done disgracefully, I would have been one of them. And it would have never been no duck down. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. I know. So, so you know, those, that, that, that's where you got to go at. You know, and for me, the hardest part for me right now, uh, and I accept it, I accept it. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. A 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was, I'll be street, but I will always tell you 
the horrors that go along with this life. It would be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV back for that WA? Yo MTV is just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. There's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always gonna be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.